This is a three-part problem. Uh, part one deals with debt to equity ratio. That would be total liabilities and debt ratio. So let's take a look at the two years we're going to make this comparison for, 2012 and 2011. <clears throat> 2012, the total liabilities and debt ratio would be total liabilities <clears throat> are going to be the 138,103, which is the uh, accounts payable, plus the long-term debt of 106,398. That gives us uh, total uh, debt of 244, or total liabilities of 244,501. And if you divide that by the liabilities and owner's equity for that year, which is 565,948, the uh, debt to equity ratio is 43.2%. That means that 43% of their total liabilities and owner's equity is equal is what the debt portion would be, 43%. So it looks like 57% uh, or so would be what the uh, uh, equity portion would be. So equity is a little bit higher than debt, which bankers like that. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at uh, the next piece of this. The uh, total equity for 2012 would be the 162. Uh, 5 plus the 158,947, that would be the common stock and the retained earnings for 2012 added together to give you 321,447. And like I said just a second ago, the, um, the debt uh, to equity uh, is about 43% debt or liabilities and about 568 or almost 57% equity. Now we're going to compare that to 2011 and see how things have changed from 2011 to 2012. So in 2011, the debt for this company was the uh, 191.896, which is the $80,000 of the accounts payable short-term debt and the long-term debt of 111.092. Add the two together, the debt for 2011 would be 191 uh, 191.986. And then the uh, equity will for 2011 be the 111092, uh, excuse me, 162500 common stock, plus retained earnings of 133490. This gives us total equity for 2011 of 295990. And so the debt to equity ratio in 2011 would be 39% uh, point 39.3 percent debt to 60 percent or 60 almost 61 percent equity so it has the ratio has changed a little bit from 2011 to 2012 and it looks like we've taken on debt has gone up and our equity uh, as it compares to total liabilities and equity has gone down some so that's part one debt to equity ratio and banks like to see this ratio uh, of course where they don't take as much risk and that means that the debt would be lower so they liked it better in 2011 the bankers did versus 2012. Part two of this problem uh, is another debt to equity type of situation where we've got uh, for 2012 we have uh, the top number is the debt which would be the 198 uh, 448 which would be the, the accounts payable up here 113 and the uh, long term notes of one of 84 8, 7, 875 so our debt is uh, 198 uh, 448 and the uh, equity portion is 266 975 which will be the uh, common stock for 2012 and the retained earnings so it looks like the relationship is 0.74 to 1 that is the uh, 0.74, uh, it would be the uh, debt and compared to the equity of, of uh, 266,975 for 2012. And then for 2011, it would be the uh, 16334, which would be accounts payable and long term notes in 2011, compared to the equity of uh, 24893 which would be the common stock and the retained earnings. So the uh, debt to equity ratio 0 0.67 to 1 uh, versus 0.74 to 1, it looks like it's rising as with respect to debt. Part 3, we have uh, times interest earned. And the higher this ratio is, the better the banks likes it. 
This measures how many times you can make your interest payment. Notice up here we have interest expense. Uh, how many times can you make this interest payment if you have to make it out of net income? So here's the ratio for 2012. It would be the uh, net income of 27706 and you want to add back the income taxes and you want to add also back the interest and then the uh, numerator would be like I said net income before taxes and interest and that's divided by the interest which is 9420 so it looks like uh, if you if you backed out income taxes and backed out interest expense from this net income number then you could make this interest payment 4.7 times in 2012 and let's see what it looks like in 2011 2011 you're going to take the net income and you're going to add back or back out the uh, income taxes and you're going to add back the interest expense and take this number and divide it by the uh, interest expense uh, payment you have to make and it looks like in 2011 we can only make it 4.2 times so from 2011 to 2012 it looks like things have gotten better with respect to this ratio and the bank likes this number to be as high as possible because they have less risk